take as an anagram for brain leak. And we saw it there. It came up behind him like a librarian. He never heard it. Barack Obama went 10 pin bowling last week and scored 37 for seven frames. Just hope the future of the free world is never decided by a bowler. How could anyone be that unka? Johnson loves this situation. With the aid of Pythagoras, just hooks it across his body. He can dry clean his pants in a toaster, but he plays tall. I don't give tens too often. That is reserved for the first man who ate a raw oyster. Merritt, he came hard when he took the mark. Trussed up like Tutankhamen. No relation to Phil. Graham in trouble. The old stripper Graham. And Gilmore holds the ball above his head, indicating something. He had to thread it through. He did that like a banana through a letterbox. It was a terrific kick. I said to Bruce last night as he was leaving, he's off to Beijing. I said, bad luck about the internet. He said, what's that? Rioli puts it out in front of Hill. They say it's easy to run downhill. Tell it to McIntosh. He made his debut three years before Google became a company. <laughs> Google it. That's ambitious. Like a cork in the ocean over his head. My word! <laughs> Nine minutes after eight. There. Oh. Well, there's your career, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Just flashing past me. That's not a good sign. <laughs> Are you sure? Am I sure that was my career? Yes. No, are you yes, sure? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I read when your interview with uh, with Haim on the uh, the weekend just passed that the one regret was announcing that you were retiring. Made a bad blue there <laughs> yeah. because everyone wants to talk about retiring, so suddenly retiring becomes very tiring. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking to myself before last weekend's game, I was thinking... Well, what if Dennis's last grand final is Sydney versus Western Sydney? Oh. Uh, I, I think bit dry. A bit dry. What about the poetry of it being the Bulldogs? Has that occurred to you? Having you know, you played with the Bulldogs in uh, 1971. Yes. There is poetry. Briefly. There is poetry, is there not? Uh, yes, I, I think there is. I was hoping they would win. I have a soft spot for them. I think most people do. And 54 is a long time ago, isn't it? Yeah. The old line about they could have rookie listed Bob Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's a long time in life. And uh, as a result, I think uh, everyone's excited they're there. And I am too, because it uh, makes for a great week. The build-up is great. And I think they'll play well because they've been just outstanding. Those three wins on the trot, all of them sudden death, make you think that they won't go away. And when you say a soft spot, do you have your softest spot for the Bulldogs? Uh, them and Melbourne, I'd yeah. say. Fremantle I don't dislike. West Coast, well, it depends. They've had a lot of success. It's based on teams not having success, not geography. Yeah, and I, I, I get that. I looked at the lineup for uh, the reserves in... Um, for, for You've done your research? In 1971, with the assistance of Damien got it for me. I noticed two names, Stillman and Joslin. Mm -hmm. They weren't the cricketers, were they? I don't know. <laughs> I, was, I was rarely there. Uh, uh, but, uh, this is reminiscent of, of the You're Fitz saying Jocelyn. That was J-O-S-L-I-N. Yeah, he was Jocelyn. the batsman. Yeah, and, yes. and Les Stillman, I think, was also a cricketer. Anyway, um, this is like so much of your commentary. Was that rude that I said I didn't remember them? No, because I've heard you say on many occasions to Bruce, Bruce has uh, blitzed you with a statistic, a statistic about some <laughs> game you've called together and you, your response is always, I don't know, Bruce, was I there? I'll be glad when that's over. All that self-shame <laughs> and bring it upon yourself. Actually, I was listening. I was just listening in the car, something completely different. But yeah. uh, you were talking about self-inflicted injuries, yes. licking your mm. knee and what have you. Yeah. One funny story I remember, nothing to do with footy. There was a famous baseballer, a fellow called John Schmaltz, Hall of Famer actually, uh -huh. and he burnt himself badly while ironing a shirt. He had it on. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting ready to go out. <laughs> Clearly a very wealthy man who didn't iron much. <laughs> and it wasn't a polyester shirt either. <laughs> no. hey, listen, what, did, what did you used to say before the metric system came in? Inch perfect. Yeah. I have never heard <laughs> that. <laughs> it was around when I was a boy, yes. It was Inch quite perfect. popular. Yes, it yeah, was. Yes, it doesn't it was. sound as poetic as centimetre perfect. The other question I want to ask you is, did you really ever have a pair of leather pants? <sighs> that is being asked a lot. I did. I sort of flew and I was a messy eater. And as a result, I made this choice to wear these leather pants so I could wipe them clean. Yeah. And after a bout of turbulence sometimes, I mean, there's food all over the place, and uh, I found it worked. It was a good addition to my repertoire. Mm, that handy hint. It, it is not football that you've grown tired of. It's the travel, and anyone could understand that, that that would, you know, interminable domestic air travel w would be just brain-destroying. Mm. Well, why not move to Melbourne? <laughs> Given that your wife, Velia, has a, apparently a punch, penchant for uh, Melbourne radio. Yes, I think she'd stalk the mm. pair of you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think, 
I can make it a bit easier and extend my career by moving to Melbourne? Or are yeah, you I just did. a Perth boy? Well, I am a Perth boy, but I love Melbourne. We both do. The family does. I think my daughter wants to move here. But uh, the kids are there at the moment. My son is back in Perth. And, uh, no, I, it gets a bit cold for me here, I've got to say, in the winter. Yeah. But, uh, no, I'm very happy Even over there. Even the pants? Uh, well, I, no, they've gone now. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're, they're, they've been sold off. Uh, and they don't fit. But, uh, no, I could see coming here perhaps a decade ago, but not now. I mean, uh, everything's worked its way out. Yeah. You know, it's, it's finished and uh, Perth is the place. Um, Committeeisms are, f- are famous. Um, but... To me, what you what you do a lot of the time is you refrain from committeeisms, or it it could be it could be self destructive. Could it could it not? If you're expected to drop one every five minutes, oh, of course, yes, yes. No one wants that. It's disrespectful to the game too. I mean, and a people uh, or person who doesn't like that, mm. you know, doesn't have to sit through it all afternoon. No, I think that'd be a bit much if you try to get three or four a quarter away. But now and again, I mean, things just do uh, appeal to you well, and. Uh, when we heard it for the first time, Ross looked at me and said, do you reckon he meant it when you said Taylor Swift? I think he denied that it was intentional. Yeah, we debated it, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember it now. But <laughs> I, I don't recall. I, I tell you, when I was, you guys were good to me. You've always been very good to me. And I remember early on when I was here, I was in a shirt shop and I was ordering some shirts to be made for my sort of angular figure. And Steve Price was on the radio. I think yeah. he'd just come to Melbourne at that stage. And uh, there was a lady who, when I went in there, knew me, and we were chatting away, and the lady sort of uh, who came in, and I sort of was still looking at the shirt, she walked up to the counter, and they were talking, and uh, anyway, they both knew that I was a football commentator, and as this was going on, the radio was blaring, 3AW, and Steve was giving me the biggest cook of all time, (laughs) and it was a very nervy, awkward situation for all concerned with changing feet. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I went out on the pavement for a while. I think you guys put him in line, though. I think you saved my bacon. I think you called him in. And well, said, I was just thinking to myself that I don't know that you would have much in common with uh, Steve, but certainly one thing you would not have in common was your angular frame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you got a favourite match? Have you got a match or a moment that you can call to mind? Uh, no, not really. I, I'm just trying to think. No. Your first grand final was 87, but we, uh, did, we didn't yeah. hear it, did we, here? No, no, that was on Broadcom. That was a strange time. Remember, they formed a company, the AFL, to on-sell the rights, and Broadcom got stuck with them. So, yeah. uh, no, it was uh, something I did with Bob Skilton, but the ABC did the footy that year here. Yeah, and but so 88. Uh, 88 was the first, first one. Time. That was Melbourne between and Hawthorne. Our, between our two teams. Mm. Yeah, it was, yeah, I've that forgotten was, that. that was, 89 must have been a... 89, great game. Yeah, yeah great game. Uh, I remember it was a hot day. I generally remember the weather as much as I do. Yeah. <laughs> it was a dusty game. You know? yeah, yeah. It was an untidy game yeah. in appearance, but it was a great game. It was a great finish. Have you, uh, uh, no doubt, uh, Greg Miles had prepared and a champion becomes a legend. I don't mm. think that Bill Collins had practised bone crusher races its way into equine immortality. Gee, you, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah. Do you have a Do you have something prepared for the final siren? No, no, I haven't even really thought about it yet. It's been a busy week. I found myself sort of getting distracted a lot because uh, things like this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm happy to be here, but, but uh, no, there's been a lot of phone calls and things, and people you meet along the way, so they've got your number, so it's hard to avoid. And I've been chatting too much, and uh, as much as I'm fond of Dennis Committee, and <laughs> some people would say too fond. Uh, I've just about had a gut full of him yeah, this week. <laughs> um, Dennis, uh, congratulations on uh, your career. Absolutely outstanding. And the flattery is hard to uh, respond to, so no need. But uh, uh, we're all going to miss you. And good luck. And I think you're the only other person I know who knows the music of the war on drugs. Oh, yes. Isn't this a magnificent song? Eyes to the Wind? Yeah, all his stuff is good. Yeah. Really good. Uh, Dennis, uh, good luck. And give our best to Velia. Thanks, Ross. Thanks, John, for everything. Uh, it is 17 after 8. You're listening to 3W Breakfast for Crown Bet. The game just changed. Gamble responsibly. This is The War on Drugs.